Good February 13th, 2020, Thursday morning to you. Love is in the air. We're one day away from the big day. It's always there. It's there in love songs, on the radio, in movies, at the theater, and on Netflix, on your TV at home, in books, in greeting cards, in raising children, in caring for a friend or an aging parent. As I said, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. In today's Heart and Home podcast, I'm sharing a list of ideas if you're stuck on what to do for that special person in your life. Not everything requires a financial investment. Ready? Here's my list. You can write a love song. If you play the guitar, you get extra points for singing it as well. You could write a handwritten card. Don't buy one. Write a poem. Call and ask if someone special in your life will be your valentine. I know it sounds corny, but that person may live on the other side of the country and not know you're still holding a torch for them. You could also send an e-card, which is a virtual Happy Valentine's Day wish from American Greetings. While email and texting are okay, Person-to-person connections are better. And, you know, then there's the usual things. You know, buying a box of chocolates, going to dinner and a movie, giving your partner free time by taking the kids out of the house. Flowers are always a hit. Of course, you could also surprise someone with a new puppy or kitten, provided they have the space and time to care for pets. You could buy a fancy watch. A weekend getaway. You get the idea. When money is no object. And some might even pop the question with an engagement ring. Celebrate the people you love on Valentine's Day with party guru Darcy Miller's printable illustrations and DIY gifts. I'm going to put a link to download free PDFs and get resources for crafts um, it's at betterhomesandgardenbhg.com slash Darcy Miller, D as in David, A-R-C-Y, M as in Mary, I-L-L-E-R. I'll include a link in the show notes, and you can download the how-tos and templates. There's more on my list. There's being kind to a stranger or paying it forward. Do you have an elderly neighbor who you could visit? Could you make a plate of warm cookies and go visit a friend? Do you know someone in the hospital that could use a friend? Don't forget to pay your respects at the cemetery as well. Now, back among the living. You have no idea how far a smile goes. Acknowledging a person's presence by a quick nod, letting them know, I see you. Sparking a conversation with a stranger. You know, being a good listener is truly an art. Earlier this week, a neighbor invited me to the local garden club monthly meeting, where I found myself inundated with every member personally introducing themselves and personally welcoming me as a guest. They even announced it during their meeting and may even include it in their minutes. I didn't expect that. And I made a new friend. As it turns out, the woman who sat next to me knew my mother. They had gone to the same high school. They grew up in the same neighborhood and they played together as young girls. We exchanged phone numbers and she extended an invitation to her home. And just never know what beautiful people God brings into your day. Be present, be open, and do show your love the other 364 days of the year, not just on Valentine's. That's just a no-brainer. 
Now, some of you might think it's a silly holiday that was created to sell more flowers and gifts in a consumer economy. And if you're single, that might be true. It's something you tell yourself to feel better about this holiday. And th this has been celebrated worldwide since Roman times. I mean, way, way back. The commercial side of Valentine's Day cards and gifts began in the 19th century. Today, the average American will spend about $200 for Valentine's this year. Here in the United States, we are expecting to spend over $27 billion. That's with a B in holiday sales for this Valentine's Day. <clears throat> but the best gift you could give a person is the gift of yourself, your time, your attention, your commitment, your support. Of course, there's two types of support, emotional and financial. And there's other ways you can show you care, especially those in a long-term relationship. And don't forget your friends. Hallmark offers help on what to say, like Valentine's Day and every day I'm grateful for you. Or how about someday our princess will come. And finally, wish we could be together swapping chocolates and laughing over candy hearts like we used to. Remember when you used to give a Valentine's to everyone in your uh, classroom? And let's not forget yourself. Give yourself a gift of self-care, a reward for completing a tough project this week, for checking off your to-do list like a champ, for sticking with a tough situation, and for believing in yourself that you are enough. I'm going to do that first thing as soon as I get done with my podcast. The sun is about to come out. Um, it's just after 7 a.m., um, it's still dark out there, but the first thing I'm going to do is go for my hour walk. I remember one of the first gifts that I bought myself when I was working in advertising. I had just switched jobs and I was working for an in-house ad agency for the J.L. Hudson department store in downtown Detroit. It was the place where my father took us when I was little after we had just moved back to the United States. It was there that I saw my first snowflakes. I'd never seen snow before. Well, of course, I had lived out of the country and where I lived in Kuwait, it was um, a desert climate, very hot. And I think the only thing I ever saw in the seven years of living abroad was uh, one time we had hail. That was it, like golf size hail. And that, and that was a big. So that first gift that I bought myself when I was working for Hudson's, which is now today gone and there's a different building there and it was purchased by Macy's. It was this $200 Seiko tank watch. I remember saying to myself, oh, that's a lot of money. It was my gift to myself, and I've had that watch. I've replaced the leather band several times. It's weathered many days. Most happy, some not so good. Ah, the gift of time. So if you are struggling in the romance department, I could share a few books that helped me when I was in my 20s. Although it was many years ago, I still remember reading an important book called The Five Love, Love Languages by Gary Chapman. This was after I read Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. That was a book by Dr. John Gray who taught both men and women how to improve their relationship and communication skills by acknowledging the differences between our genders. Now, communicating your feelings is one of the most valuable lessons you will learn. But what I also learned is not everyone is good at communicating. Trying to get something out of someone is like pulling teeth. It's painful. It's nearly impossible. And it causes many to withdraw even further. 
it's always best to seek help from a close friend or a professional if you're confused about a person's actions or lack thereof. And because trying to navigate romance is not an easy task if you're not experienced enough to be able to spot, quote, red flags. In my podcast tomorrow, I will share a personal story of how I unknowingly fell into a bad situation that turned deadly. It's about an online dating scam through Facebook. It happens to many innocent women and men every day. It happened to me, and for the first time in 10 years, I will be sharing my own story in tomorrow's podcast on Valentine's Day. For those listeners who are enjoying this podcast, please consider supporting the Heart and Home podcast. There is a listener support link at the end of the show notes, which allows listeners to support this podcast. I'm Sabah Fakuri, and I hope you feel loved and appreciated on Valentine's Day because you are.